welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. Well, it's prayers answered for the people of the southeast, especially Anambra State, who have not hidden their opposition to the transfer of some suspected Boko Haram prisoners to the area. The Anambra State Governor, Willie Obiano, has announced that the inmates currently at the Ikulobia prison at Aguata local government area of the state will soon be relocated. The governor told journalists in Orca, the Anambra State capital, that this was the outcome of a security meeting held with a seven-man delegation from the National Security Advisor. The Bukharam uh, detainees uh, being quartered at uh, the Kulobia prison. Uh, I want to reassure you yourselves that um, uh, the meeting went very well. Uh, the various communities in Anambra, the packets, the, the car unions, the churches, and others, and traditional institutions, uh, made a great point to them that we want these people removed and removed immediately. And they've reassured that uh, they will take up our message uh, back to Anam uh, Abuja and that um, these people will be removed very soon. For Nigeria to overcome its security challenge, it must properly equip its military, come up with a well-articulated security network, and also develop a sound economic agenda. Well, that's coming from the British High Commissioner in Nigeria, Mr. Andrew Pocock. In an interview with Channels Television, Mr. Pocock attributed the renewed attacks in the Northeast to lack of cohesion among security agencies and other concerned parties. He says the only way to defeat the insurgents is to make Nigeria's security forces more resilient. I think many people in Nigeria thought that the country was not being as well governed as it might be. And certainly in 2014, um, the resurgence of Boko Haram, after, if you remember, there was a, a surge in 2013 where the army had some successes, but they weren't, they weren't followed up. And Boko Haram came surging back in 2014 um, and effectively controlled much of the northeast of this country, in Borno State as well as in Adamawa and Yobe. 20,000 people murdered, infrastructure destroyed, the war, there was a conflict spilling over borders into the surrounding countries. Um, and then, of course, with the, the election looming on the horizon, many people began to fear that the country was headed for a period of prolonged instability. I think things are a little different at the moment. Um, I'm not saying that there's been a miracle cure. Far from it. Our federal high court sitting in Abuja has dismissed a fundamental human rights enforcement suit filed by an alleged mastermind of the April the 14th, 2014 bomb blast in Nanya, a suburb of Abuja, Mr. Aminu Uguche. Mr. Uguche asked the court to order his release from custody of the Department of State Services and award 600 million naira as damages in his favor for being kept in detention since his arrest in July 2014 without arraignment before any court. The presiding judge, Justice Adeni Ademola, in his judgment, held that the suit lacked merit as the applicant's detention by the DSS since July the 15th, 2014, in order to complete its investigations, was backed by court orders. He also held that the orders made by the various courts allowing the accused detention for successive periods were in line with the powers the court should exercise under Section 27 of the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013. He also ruled that the suspect, who had been kept in detention since his extradition from Sudan, where he allegedly escaped to after the bombing incident, had been subsequently arraigned on terrorism charges before Justice Ahmed Mohammed, also of the Federal High Court in Abuja. Now, a coroner sitting in Ikaja, Lagos, has called for the investigation and possible prosecution of two structural engineers who built the collapsed six-story building belonging to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, which killed 116 persons. Magistrate Oyetade Komalafe recommended the engineers Oladile Ogundeji and Akimbela Fatiregun for prosecution for criminal negligence. The coroner also indicted the church for building without possession of necessary permits. 
At every past seating of the coroner, supporters of Prophet Timotopo Joshua gathered in solidarity with their pastor, and today the most important of all days is no different. They are here once again patiently waiting for the chief magistrate, Ogi Tadi Komolape, to give his verdict on the inquiries conducted. The seven-page verdict, the chief magistrate Komolafe reminded everyone that the coroner, which was merely a fact-finding body, was set up to look into the cause of death of 116 victims after a building collapsed at the Synagogue Church of All Nations on the 12th of September 2014. In his summary, he concluded that the death of the victims was caused by a blunt force trauma sustained from the building collapse structural failure due to the combination of design and detailing errors. The coroner also revealed that the alleged aircraft flying over the building had nothing to do with the collapse. Building permits were not obtained by the church in respect of the additional structure added to the building. Also, foundational failure is a remote cause of the collapsed building. It therefore recommended, amongst other measures, the contractors, engineer Oladile Ogundeji and Akimbela Fatiribu, of hard rock construction should be investigated and tried for criminal negligence. Synagogue Church of All Nations should also be investigated and be proceeded against under the law by relevant authorities for not possessing necessary building permits. CSP Arun Alaba, the divisional police officer in Kotsun Police Station, should be transferred and replaced. The recommendation has to do with the Failure to have obtained a building approval. If the police are unwilling or unable to investigate, the corona can step in. We do apologize for the issues we seem to be having there, but let's just move on. The immediate past governor of Adamawa State, Murtala Nyako, and the former governor of Imo State, Ikedi Hakim, have been dragged before a federal high court in Abuja where they are being arraigned on alleged money laundering charges. Mr. Nyako is being arraigned on a 37-count charge along with his son, Abdulaziz Nyako. The charges were brought against them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The former governor of Imo State, Mr. Hakim, who arrived at the court minutes after the arrival of Mr. Nyako, is to be arraigned before Justice Gabriel Kolawale on charges bordering on allegations of money laundering. Still ahead on the News at 10, we'll have a discussion about that. I'll be joined by the West Africa Head Ford Foundation, Mr. Innocent Chukuma, and we'll also bring you some business to Johnson. Thank you.